right, this is part two uh, for the graphs of sine and cosine. All right, so let's graph y equals sine 2x. I've already got you started with some x values to put in there. So let's figure out what the corresponding y values would be. Well, if you plug 0 in, 2 times 0 is 0, and the sine is 0, well, that's just 0. All right, plug pi over 4 in, and you get the sine of 2 times pi over 4, which is the sine of pi over 2, which would be 1. Everybody see how that happened? If you take pi over 2 and plug it in for x, 2 times pi over 2 would be pi, and the sine of pi would be 0. If you take 3 pi over 4 and plug it in for x, um, then you're going to get 3 pi over 2, and the sine of 3 pi over 2 would be negative 1. If you take pi and plug it in, the sine of 2 pi would be 0. 5 pi over 4. So you take the sine of 5 pi over, say 2 times 5 pi over 4, which would be 5 pi over 2, and take the sine of that, that would be 1. I'll let you figure that out with going around your circle. So, and so you continue this by plugging these values in, you're going to get the following numbers. 0, negative 1, and 0. I'll let you guys finish out the math on that. All right, so to graph this thing, well, let's go out here to 2 pi, and then pi, and then pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. But this time, since we've got pi over 4s in there, I also want to put in pi over 4. This would be 3 pi over 4. This would be 4 pi over 4, so this would be 5 pi over 4. This is 6 pi over 4, and this would be 7 pi over 4. And then 2 pi, which would be 8 pi over 4. All right, so we're going between 1 and negative 1 again. All right, so 0, pi over 4, we're up here at 1. At pi over 2, we're at 0. At 3 pi over 4, we're at negative 1. At pi, we're at 0. At 5 pi over 4, we're up here at 1 again. At 3 pi over 2, we're at 0. At 7 pi over 4, we're at negative 1. At 2 pi, we're back to 0. So, sine looks something like this. Sine of 2x looks something like this. My hand slipped. All right, it's going to that point. Okay. All right, so uh, we're going through pi, the x-axis of pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And then, of course, it comes down this way, too. Okay, so what's different? Well, from here to here starts over again at pi. So the period has changed. Right? The period is pi. Does it happen again? So you start here, you go, uh, another pi, you get up to 2 pi. Yeah, so the periods change. So a coefficient of x inside your argument here, that's going to change your period, the period of your function. All right? So make a little note. For b greater than 0, the graph of a times sine bx and y equals a times cosine bx, uh, the graphs of those things have period 2 pi divided by b. Okay? And when it's just cosine x, and b would be 1, it'd have 2 pi divided by 1, so the period would be 2 pi, which is what, we, which is what we've had. But a minute ago, we had a 2 right in front of there. Oh, let me do here. A 2 in front of that uh, x. You know, b was 2, so 2 pi divided by 2, which would be pi. All right, so uh, let's look at this one. All right, so we have negative 3 times the cosine of 1 half x. The amplitude would be the absolute value of negative 3, which would be 3. The period would be 2 pi divided by a half, which would be, everybody agree, 4 pi. All right, so now we know the amplitude and we know the period. Sketching the graph is going to be the same concept that we had in the previous video. Go out for one period, so 4 pi, then cut it in half, all right, that'd be 2 pi, then cut that in half, get pi, and cut this one in half, 2 pi plus 4 pi is 6 pi, 6 pi divided by 2 is 3 pi. And then we're going up to 3, down to negative 3. Cosine usually starts up the top here, but since it's negative, it's going to start down here. And so it goes like such. It looks just like the cosine graph. We're just hitting different numbers, that's all. And there's your sketch. Everybody okay? All right, let's try another one.
All right, so here the amplitude is one fourth, the absolute value one fourth to one fourth. The period is two pi over three. Go out to two pi over three. Then cut that in half. So two pi over three times one half would be pi over three. Everybody see that? And then cut that distance in half. One half times pi over three would be pi over six and then cut this distance in half. Well, pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3 would be 3 pi over 3, which would be pi, and then divide that by 2, and you get pi over 2. Remember, to get halfway between two numbers, you take the two numbers, add them up, and divide that sum by 2. All right, we're going to go between 1 fourth. So we say, all right, that looks like 1 fourth for our scale, and this looks like negative 1 fourth. And we sketch the graph. All right, sine, so it's positive. We have sine, so it's going up like such. Coming down through pi over 3. And there you go. That's a one cycle graph. All right, but we put the arrows on there to say, hey, it's going on forever to continue this pattern, right? All right, getting better, feeling better. All right, so know how to find the amplitude and the period for both sine and cosine functions. Um, once you know the, the period and the amplitude, then to sketch a graph is pretty easy. You go out uh, to whatever the period is, and then cut it in half, and then cut it in half again, and then find the midpoint between these other two numbers. And then go up to the amplitude, go down to the amplitude, and then sketch your graph accordingly. Right? All right, that's it. Uh, the next graph is going to deal with... Um, horizontal translations, which actually we're going to give a new name. All right, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.